Good afternoon, good morning, greetings, assalamu alaikum. My name is Shwa and I am the host and founder of a podcast called Light Up with Shwa. It's a weekly podcast on conscious living and parenting. I hope you have already subscribed to it and if you haven't, please do so. Uh, I would really appreciate it because it's been uh, going well. I am getting good feedback and all, but I need more people to let me know how am I doing and what are you getting out of this podcast. Uh, my guest today is also part of the series on coronavirus series that I'm doing, the conversations. Uh, I have been asking five questions to my guests uh, and some have uh, given me written replies and some are uh, live online. So this is a live uh, interview which will be posted soon. Um, and I have my guest who is going to reply on five questions that I've been asking and we will be just answering that. Um, so, welcome, Talison, Dr. Talison. I know you're not a medical doctor, so you have to say that. <laughs> yes, welcome, and tell us who you are and what do you do. Thank you very much, Shwa. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this important work that you're doing. Thank you. Yes, I am Talison Zahn Grenfell Lee. My doctorate is in social and ecological ethics, and uh, I have a background also in molecular biology which was one reason that when I went and studied theology and ethics, I decided to focus on ecology and ecological ethics, kind of tied together that. And so what I've been doing since then for the past few years is building a kind of program of climate resilience, chaplaincy and coaching and various kinds of programs and frameworks that I'm offering to try to help people understand how to wrap our minds around this enormous challenge that we're facing in terms of the climate and destabilization. Mm. And the pandemic is a kind of microcosm of climate destabilization. It's a kind of taste of what's to come. So um, what I've been doing lately is applying my work on climate resilience to pandemic resilience. Okay, excellent. And that's what we want. That's why we are having this conversation with you because it's uh, timely. You are in this area, you're, it's your career, you deal with um, climate change and you are uh, a preacher as well, right? You didn't talk about that side. I mean, I'm not an ordained pastor, but I, um, you do. I have been trained in preaching and I am often invited to preach and I come from a very long line of preachers, so I think it might be genetically in my blood as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So let's begin with the first question that I've been asking. Um, how are you affected or dealing I mean, in one question, I have a couple of questions. How, how are you dealing or are you affected by it? And how you're managing these challenges or situation of a coronavirus pandemic? Well, I, the most direct way that I've been affected really has been um, personally and professionally. I've been affected because my twin sister has the coronavirus. It's been more than 40 days that she's been struggling with it. She's been able to treat herself at home. She hasn't had to be hospitalized, but it's been a really long and difficult road for her. And it's really shown me how scary this uh, pandemic is and how difficult a virus it is for us to fight um, and to heal from. On a professional level, I already mentioned that uh, it's actually been in a sad way, but it's been a kind of opportunity for me to put into practice all of the things that I've been working on uh, in terms of climate resilience. And so that's been something that's been helpful for me personally, because uh, the way that I look at climate resilience is really looking at three different areas of trying to build resilience. And one of them is a kind of resilient mindset through um, a variety of practices. And some of it is the empowerment that we get from the more practical aspects of resilience. But there's also this whole, what I call a Sabbath component, which is basically anything that helps us feel uh, psychologically resilient, spiritually and emotionally resilient. So sometimes that means grieving. And sometimes that means singing and dancing. Uh, and sometimes it just means mindfully looking at the flowers and the birds or whatever we can see that helps us feel nourished. Sometimes it means just going and sitting um, in a place that makes us feel connected with our ancestors, uh, our faith tradition, or whatever helps us feel nourished 
uh, be able to release the fear and the grief that we have and also be able to feel strengthened and inspired and, and feel the courage that we need. And then there's a kind of preparedness aspect that I work on. And that has to do with, you know, are you able to are you able to be resilient in the face of a lack of infrastructure? For example, no toilet paper or um, not having access to the foods that you normally can have access to or the medicines that you normally have access to. So I've been applying that kind of thing, uh, the work I do for climate resilience to the pandemic. And then the last one is the sort of political awareness, policy work and political activism piece, which is these are the sort of three areas and they're all equally important. And I've been trying uh, to stay aware of how this pandemic has affected some people more than others uh, and the justice aspects of it and try to advocate when I can in the ways that I can to build awareness for equity and really just um, learn about the global Green New Deal. What can I do to make a difference? Mm. Um, one thing, I'll give you an example. Uh, in my town, my church just immediately started uh, collecting food and then handing it out to anybody who needed food because a lot of kids in particular were relying on the free meals for breakfast and lunch at the schools. And so uh, because of my husband's job, which is considered essential, I'm not allowed to go, our family's not allowed to go volunteer for that. So instead what we've been doing is going around our neighborhood once a week and just collecting bags of food that people leave out uh, at the end of their driveway and taking those to the church. And so it's one way that I can help address the inequity of how p different communities and families are, are affected by the pandemic. Um, and so just try to think creatively about how we can each make a difference together and what does communal resilience look like? What does ecosystem communal resilience look like to mm -hmm. those, those ideas? Very good. Thank you. So coming back to your sister, uh, is she... Uh, is, the, her, is that a, her choice not to go to the hospital or is that how the hospital told her to, if, if that's okay to ask, uh, that of course. You, you, you should go in, at home and stay at home and deal, uh, you know, manage it? Well, her symptoms are serious enough that she, they wanted, the doctors wanted her to come in and be examined and be tested uh, for various things, her blood pressure, her blood oxygenation, how her kidneys are doing, and things like that. But when they test her, they always tell her, uh, you look good, keep doing what you're doing, you oh, can okay. go home and continue. So she's never had to be checked in okay. to the hospital okay. um, because she's doing such a good job. She takes a lot of hot baths, mm. she takes a lot of probiotics and, and medicinal herbs, mm. she, she rests, and she does a lot of practices of reduction of anxiety okay. and... Um, things like that, which help manage her blood pressure too. So in the end, whatever she is doing clearly is working. And it's um, just wave after wave of symptoms kind of getting worse and then a little better and then worse and a little better uh, for the past over the over 40 days now. Mm. I think that she's finally maybe uh, turning a corner and really coming out of it. But it's still better, worse, better, worse. Okay. Um, but the doctors have been, she's been very communicative with them and they've been very clear when to call, when to come in, when not to. And so we just, um, alhamdulillah, we've been able to um, continue to treat with the treatments at home. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because it's very relevant. I mean, your own sister is in this and we are talking about Corona. So I mm -hmm. thought it's important to get some information uh, maybe later after we are done, if there is something that is uh, uh, helpful for people who are listening or watching uh, or are infected by this uh, pandemic, uh, this virus, and uh, are affected by the pandemic also, or any of their loved ones, or how uh, a person whose sister is infected, how is she managing? So, and mm -hmm. it's, it seems like she must be in good health. That's why she has not been hospitalized or on any ventilator on, on anything. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. Well, she, I mean, she did have a lot of trouble breathing uh, for a okay. certain period of it. Yeah. So how did she um, manage that? She, was she, I mean, she obviously, didn't go on well in you and I both. Sorry, uh, she no, didn't go she on never had okay. to. Okay, so she never on. had to. Um, and you, you've already said this, but I'm going to say again. Obviously, okay. this is not about dispensing medical advice. I'm yes. just telling you yes. what worked well for her. For her, yes. Um, but in our family, for a long time, we have noticed that hot water treatment is something that um, we, for a long time, have been using for a whole variety of things. And the more you start using it, kind of 
much more of a relief it becomes and how helpful it is. And also the kind of thing almost anybody can do anywhere. So it's accessible to almost anyone anywhere. She put a lot of hot, wet compresses on her chest. She breathed in a lot of steam. And she also takes a lot of baths. And when she takes a bath, she submerges her head even under the bath. Mm. Um, And this is very hot baths. Mm. so actually, a lot of people don't realize if you have a fever, taking a hot bath can help you heal from the fever. It's counterintuitive. Mm-hmm. People think, oh, we should be cooling the body down. Mm-hmm. But the body is trying to heat up for a reason. Mm-hmm. And a hot bath can really help you heal. So anyway, this is just, just I think yeah. if I had to pick one thing that was the thing that helped her the most, it has been taking multiple very hot baths every day. And whenever her systems got worse, when they would start to get better, she would kind of back off on taking quite so many baths. Mm. And then they would get worse again, and she would just take more baths. Mm. So uh, even though, um, obviously, we're not giving people advice, we yes. can say what worked for her. And yeah. this is the, th- the one thing that I, I feel hopeful about it, because it's something that uh, almost anybody can do, uh, even if you just have hot compresses, even if you don't have a bath or a shower, but mm-hmm. even better a bath. Yeah. Yeah. So again, this is not a medical advice. Uh, we are just saying what works for people, but this is something anybody can do either, even if you have a virus or not, if you have a flu or any symptoms of, uh, chest congestion, this helps. But if you are in this situation and, uh, you're not in that worst situation that you're hospitalized and you can at home do this all right let's go to the next question which is any positive message that you can give during this time uh, from your experience well i it's a little tricky you know you don't want to make light of how difficult it's been Mm -hmm. um so when you know when you name the positive message it's it's uh, also holding how hard it's been. Yes. Um, but all of us need to be able to try to think about positive aspects too. And for me, there's been this awareness that I think a lot of people have now more than ever realized of just how our society has been structured so that it actually is not structured at all for Main Street. It's really structured for Wall Street. The government... Uh, the federal government is um, is just set up in a way that does not support the working class uh, or the ecosystem or us having a future planet to live on. And I think a lot of people are realizing now, if you look at all of the money that we have spent in the past you know, few weeks, trillions of dollars in trying to save Wall Street, that if we had applied to things like the Green New Deal, we could have Uh, We could have basically solved all of these things for the majority of people, but instead money is just being channeled to the wealthy elite. And I hope that this raised awareness will really help people understand that we are not red and blue. We are all together in this and we are not human and non-human. We are all together in this and that we can really work together and say, hey, you know, there are forces that are really trying to divide us and instead of allowing that to happen if we can come together and take this awareness and this opportunity that the pandemic has given us we might be able to build a better uh, society for future generations of all kinds thank you for that Um, my third question what have you learned or gained or lost there are three parts to it learned gained or lost during this time you can answer all three or one or two Thank you for watching part one with Alison. Please stay tuned for part two with her on the same topic. And you can subscribe, rate, share and review. Light up with Shaw. Thank you.